So today we are taking a fun little day trip outside of Chiang Mai. We are visiting the Elephant Nature Park, which is about 60 kilometers outside of the city. And this is a, an elephant rescue and rehabilitation center, so we're going to be showing you around. So this center is also a refuge for a number of injured and abandoned animals, such as dogs, cats, water buffalo, and others. So we have a bucket full of fresh fruit and on today's menu for the elephants are bananas and watermelons. So that was my first time touching an elephant and their skin is surprisingly coarse and hairy. So right now the rescue center is home to 37 elephants, 32 of them are female and 5 of them are males, and these are Asian elephants which vary from the African elephant. The African elephant is actually a lot larger than the Asian elephant and they also have much bigger ears. Most of the elephants on site have been rescued from the logging, tourism and begging industry. Time of day, the elephants are now being bathed. at the Elephant Nature Park has been phenomenal. We've really enjoyed having the opportunity to feed, bathe and interact with all of the elephants and it's a great alternative to doing the trekking where you're just sitting on top of the elephant and they're working. This way you get to spend time with the elephant in its natural environment, feeding it and just having a great time. Today we are visiting a special little place. We got up super early at 5 in the morning and check it out. This is where we are. Angkor Wat, Cambodia. inside Angkor Wat and this is the largest religious structure in the whole world. So this is my very first time visiting Angkor Wat but Sam over here has been to this place a whopping four times. World traveler much? <laughs> so how is your fourth time here different from the first, second and third? Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> well the temples are certainly still as impressive as ever but 
There are so many more tourists here than when I first came. It's, I would say, tripled, quadrupled, maybe even more than that. It's just unbelievable how many people are sharing the experience. So this is actually a Hindu temple that was dedicated to the Hindu god Vishnu and the temple was built by a Cambodian king who helped unify the country and to also spread the Khmer influence across Southeast Asia. One of the most impressive things about this temple here is actually the massive moat that surrounds it. It's one of the first things you notice as you're coming up to the temple. There are several options for booking tickets to visit the temples of Angkor. We went with a three-day option and that was $40, but you can also go with a one-day option, two-day option, or if you really love temples, seven days. Wow. But I imagine that's quite pricey. A good time to come to Angkor Wat is actually right at lunchtime because a lot of the tourists, buses and tourists are out having lunch or are at that point in the day templed out which means they're, they're really hot, they're tired, they're sort of, they've seen enough temples for the day. So if you want uh, an alternative time to come, definitely consider coming around you know, between say 12 and 1.30. Coming back for the fourth time was amazing. I never get tired of this place. But one funny observation I have is that I notice that any families dragging along bringing their children, <laughs> the children really didn't seem to be enjoying this as much. They're just dragging their feet. I think it has a lot to do with the heat and humidity outside right now. It's just, it is really, really hard to be walking around and not sweating profusely. I really enjoyed getting up early and coming to watch the sunrise at Angkor Wat. I thought that maybe the experience wouldn't feel special because there are literally hundreds of people also here at that time of day, but it felt kind of like we were sharing the moment together, so I really enjoyed it. So we have made it to Luang Prabang and this city has quickly become one of my favorites here in Southeast Asia. This is the cultural hub of Laos and we're going to show you a few of the things you can do around town. So when you're visiting Luang Prabang, it's really easy to stick to the city center. There's so much to do and see there, but if you have the time, Come outside and explore the outskirts of the city. Come check out the more rural sections. Right now we're going across a bamboo bridge and we're gonna see what's on the other side. Lead the way. Because this is a very small city, it's really easy to find yourself in the countryside. So that's exactly what we've been doing, just wandering down rural areas. And we even found a dog to, to join us for the walk. And now we are up 
bright and early for a biking tour around the city. We picked up these bikes for 20,000 kip, which is $2.50, and we have them for the day, so we're going to be cycling around. Let's see what we find. When comparing Luang Prabang to other cities in Southeast Asia, there are some major advantages. One of them being that there's hardly any traffic here. It's a wonderful opportunity to take out your bicycle and just explore. You can go down the main roads, you can go down the side streets, and you're not going to have to deal with cars and other bicycles or even pedestrians. Luang Prabang is very pedestrian friendly. In fact, there are so many different little back alleys and lanes to explore that it's just a great idea to wander about without any sense of direction. some fantastic views in the city so one of our recommendations is to enjoy a meal by the river which is what we're doing tonight another thing you'll want to do when you're in Luang Prabang is to visit all the temples around the city this morning we are visiting Wat Xiang Thong and it's one of the main temples in Luang Prabang. It is also known as the Golden City Temple and it really has some impressive glass mosaics so you'll want to wander around and take some photos. Twenty thousand kip to enter which is two dollars and fifty cents American and like most places, it's good to come early because it starts to get busy during the middle of the day. Now it's time for us to get a little bit of exercise. We're going to climb up 328 steps up Mount Fusi, which is actually more like a hill for the best views of Luang Prabang. to reach the top of this mountain is 20,000 kip which again is two dollars and fifty cents and it's kind of cool going up because you go up one way and then you come down the other side of the mountain so you get to see different views along the way and how could we have a list of things to do in a city without focusing on the local cuisine we're here at our favorite rest in Tamarin we've been here so often it's literally our home away from home and we're going to show you a few of our favorite dishes So this over here is a coriander pickle. Next we have an eggplant dip, tomato dip. We have a paste made from buffalo skin. We have some seaweed chips and then some vegetables that we can use with the sauce. So let's dig in. And that all goes together, of course, with our sticky rice. Ooh. So Sam is going to demonstrate so for this us. This is how you eat it. You just kind of put together a little ball like that. And then you can pick a different dip. I'll try the buffalo sauce here. Put it together just like that. Pop it in your mouth. Delicious. So this is the second plate we've ordered. Again, here we have a vegetable pickle. This is a pork salad that also has banana flowers. We have a pork sausage. Here's some buffalo jerky, Sam's favorite. Oh yeah. And over here we have some little lettuce rolls that are stuffed with different dips, different sauces. So we'll be trying those. We've ordered so much food we almost forgot about this next dish. But it's time for me to do the honors. I'm going to unveil our steamed fish which comes wrapped in a banana leaf. And it's called mokpa. Let's see what's in here. 
It's like opening a present. I know, it's like Christmas on a plate. Oh, wow. There it is. See the steam coming off of it. Mm, that's gonna be good. And when the sun goes down, it's time to go shopping. We're at the tourist night market and we're picking up souvenirs. One thing that Luang Prabang is known for is for its alms giving, which happens at 6 a.m. every morning. This is where monks collect alms of rice from kneeling locals and tourists. on how not to be a total wanker at the ceremony. First, don't use your flash, don't blind the monks. And secondly, don't chase them down. You see people doing both of these things and it's infuriating. If you love to eat like we do, then you can't leave Luang Prabang without taking a cooking class. Today we're at the Fusi Market and we're picking up ingredients before we start preparing our food. Sugar, now cooking like Thai food. You see, you taste Thai food, it tastes milky, creamy, sweetly because they add lots of coconut milk, lots of sugar. That's why your food tastes like that. Love food when you eat, tastes lots of herb, lots of texture. This is love. Food. <laughs> so, I'd like to point out the salmon are making the exact same dish. This is his sauce. <laughs> This is mine. What are you missing? Just about everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we have our buffalo salad. So we, we stir fried some buffalo meat and we also added bean sprouts. There's banana flowers. We have string beans, hot chilies, and mint leaves. So we're going to be rolling this up in lettuce leaves. It's kind of like a little fresh roll. Today we're going to be having a special experience. We are taking a bamboo train along these old tracks that used to run from Nam Pen all the way to Battambang. So this train is really just a bamboo platform with a few mats laid over top. It has a six horsepower engine and we are going to be speeding through and see what we find.
This morning we've got a special activity planned. We are taking cooking class, Khmer cooking class, and I'm all thumbs in the kitchen, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. Right now we are at the local market and we are going to pick up some ingredients for the cooking class. And it's raining. A red curry paste, yeah? And it's a chili paste, yeah. So these are vegetables, uh, very, very fresh vegetable. And then they say, Ginger, but it is not a ginger, it is galangal. Coconut, and then she grated it. You know, she grated it to get her meat, coconut meat. So we've got her aprons on, ready to cook. See them leave Phnom Penh and see how no wheel. They converse, you know, they change how to make fish amok. They make short camp as a four or three or four minute. Trying to slice lemongrass. Our ingredients so far, they smell really good. Ten minutes. <coughs> and what might you be doing? Just crushing the ten ingredients. Minutes, <laughs> make a pounding for ten minutes. Making the curry paste. Yeah. Oh, so good. We're really earning our meal here. We're making our curry paste. We've been pounding away for almost 10 minutes now. Now we're slicing up the snake fish. Still haven't cut my finger. Okay, so here is our amok. We made a little curry type thing, put it in the banana bowl that we've prepared. And it yet has to be steamed now. Yes. So here is the meal that we prepared today. We have spring rolls, a nice dipping sauce. Lok lak, a kind of beef, meat, and over here, amok, which is fish in a coconut cream sauce. Okay, so I'm going to try my lok lak. Let's see how this turned out. Cooked it myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to try one of the spring rolls we made. Mm. I still can't believe I didn't burn down the kitchen. <laughs> and it's delicious, by the way. <laughs> We just finished our cooking class. There's no, I didn't cause an international incident. I didn't burn down the kitchen. So overall, a success. If anyone wants to come, the kitchen is called Nari's Kitchen, and they have a morning and an evening class, and it costs $10 a person. This restaurant and cooking school is run by Nari and her, hu her husband, Toot. They will take you to the market and you will spend an hour there just looking at different vegetables, picking up ingredients, and then afterwards you come back to the school, you cook for two hours, and then, then you get to enjoy your meal. So we highly recommend it. Excellent food. So it's Saturday night in Chiang Mai, and today we are heading to the Saturday night market. 
Well, we're still a few blocks away, but I know we're close. You know why? Because I can smell the food. I got myself a twist potato, which is a lot like the tornado chips we used to have in Korea. Looks like it's all season. Mm. And? Nice, barbecue flavored. And you're gonna be sharing that. <gasps> you're wasting the chips. <laughs> Snow ice cream with blueberry sauce drizzled over top. Mm. How articulate. Mm. Mm. Did you get? I've got some pan fried dumplings, very similar to the Korean goon mandu that we often had when we were living as teachers in Korea. So let's see if these are as good. They look hot. <laughs> his favorites here. So what started as just a little snack out here at the market has turned on to a full-on feast. I've got dim sum and fried spring rolls. Looking good and I got this German sausage. Mm -hmm. Very good. And in case we didn't quite have enough to eat, a sweet little dessert treat. So it's banana egg roti with lots of chocolate and condensed milk drizzled over top. night market we were supposed to go for a walk but guess what we ended up having a massive feast and so instead of exercise we were gorging the whole time but it was worth it welcome, welcome to, to Singapore. Singapore we've got less than 48 hours in the city we're gonna show you as much as we possibly can 
limited time taking down to visit the world's most prosperous city-state and busiest port, we set out on foot, bus, subway, and boat to cover as much ground as we possibly could. Singapore has often been given the title of the sterile utopia. However, after traveling around chaotic Southeast Asian hubs like Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur, and Saigon, it was a welcome relief to visit a mega city that was clean, orderly, spacious, and pedestrian friendly. One of the top highlights was visiting the various districts, including Chinatown, Little India, and Kampong Glam. Hopping on a traditional bum boat offered a unique perspective of the city as we were able to learn more about its colorful history on our guided tour. One of the highlights was drinking Singapore slings at the Raffles Hotel where the drink was invented. Paying 27 Singapore dollars allowed us to sip on this wonderful cocktail and throw peanuts on the floor. Singapore is impressive by day but really shines at night. Many of the standout landmarks have a completely different look when the sun goes down and the bright lights of the city emerge. When it comes to street food, Singapore ranks favorably with Korea, Malaysia, Taiwan, and Thailand. Hawker centers offered up a spread of Asian delights that were heavy on flavor while being light on our wallets. In order to cover as much ground as possible, we purchased a hop-on, hop-off bus ticket to get around the city. Being able to get on and off whenever we wanted was a real bonus as it helped us preserve our walking leg. Although we saw many of the most popular attractions such as Merlion, Marina Bay, and the Fullerton Hotel, it was the adventures we had wandering around that formed the greatest impressions of the city. Overall, our time in Singapore was distinctly memorable. Hopefully we'll have a chance to come back again soon to explore more of this impressive 21st century city-state. in Malacca right now and it is night time so we are about to head over to Jonker Street where they have one of the biggest night markets I have ever seen. It is a great place to find food and go shopping so let's head over there. Nothing better to do at the night market, the Jonker Street night market, than to indulge in street food. And we've got a refreshing little dish right down here. Take a look at it. Different kinds of jellies and beans and shaved ice with sweet, maybe some sweet coconut milk and cane syrup. Oh, this is ever good. Perfect way to beat the heat. Here we've ordered something that's called a carrot cake. I am not seeing any carrots so far, but it looks really tasty. Let's see what this is. It smells good. Mm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. How would you describe it? Not carrot. I would say <laughs> it's like a pad thai without the noodles. You okay. have the bean sprouts, you have a little bit of tofu, some egg, peanuts. Awesome. So, I don't know where the carrot name comes from. <laughs> So I just 
bought some sugar cane juice. It's really sweet and refreshing. I love that they gave us lots of ice. Perfect. Perfect for a hot night like this. We boarded a river taxi, one of our favorite ways of getting around Bangkok to visit one of the most iconic landmarks of the entire city. Today is one of our last days in Thailand and actually one of our last days in Southeast Asia. So we've decided to do a bit of sightseeing around Bangkok and we are visiting Wat Arun. This is the Temple of Dawn located on the west bank of the Chao Phraya River. sweating profusely and now it's time to go climb this massive temple. I've seen water rune a few times when traveling down the Chao Phraya River and it's really interesting because from a distance it just looks like it's a great temple maybe made out of concrete but once you actually get here and walk up close to it you can see all the intricate little details like it's made up of broken tiles and ceramics so it's really cool it's a bit of a surprise. and it gets even steeper. So that was easily the scariest set of stairs I have ever climbed. The steps were like this high and they were only this wide so your feet could barely fit on there. I had to come down seated the whole time, like just on my butt. Tips for visiting Water Run. First, make sure you bring tons of water. Like we brought two water bottles and we've just guzzled them. I swear I've sweated out half of my body weight. And second, even though it's a really steep climb, even if you're afraid of heights like I personally am, it's still worth going up. The views are amazing. Welcome to, to Bali, Bali Indonesia. Indonesia. After spending nearly a year traveling in Southeast Asia, we couldn't leave without first visiting Bali. We decided to take a two-week trip to the famed island and split our time between Ubud and Saner to explore as much as possible. During one of our first nights on the island, we attended a Balinese fire and trance performance. 
This dance and music drama originated in the 1930s, depicting stories from Hindu literature. Ubud is the art and cultural capital of Bali, and we enjoyed spending a few days here. Our mornings in the town were spent visiting the various temples, browsing through markets, and soaking in the surroundings. We also had a chance to visit the Tagalalang rice terraces. They were lush, green, and reminded us of our time in Korea because Sam's apartment overlooked rice terraces. Bali is mainly Hindu, and the island is home to many temples. During our time in Bali, we visited the Elephant Temple, which is best known for its menacing cave entrance. We also visited Gunung Kawi, which is nicknamed the Rock Temple. The Rock Temple gets its name because of the 10 shrines that were carved into the rock wall. They stand 7 meters tall and are a true sight to behold. Well, I'm supposed to sprinkle water on my head, so here we go. During our tour around the island, we stopped at a lookout point where we saw the impressive Mount Batur looming in the horizon. Mount Batur is an active volcano, however when we learned that it was open to hikers, we decided we were up for the challenge. Bali is a great jump off point for exploring some of the surrounding beaches and islands. Trips to Lombok, Nusi Lembongan and the Gili Islands are very easy to arrange. There are plenty of water sports to choose from including snorkeling, freediving, scuba diving, surfing and even kayaking. Ubud is home to the monkey forest where infamous little macaques roam freely. The monkey forest is home to over 600 monkeys who over time have lost all fear of man. The monkeys are not shy and will approach people and even climb onto their bodies if they believe you have food. If you're feeling adventurous and would like to feed the monkeys, you can purchase bananas right at the entrance of the monkey forest. One of the highlights of our time in Bali was climbing Mount Batur for sunrise. The morning of the hike, we got up at 2 in the morning and were driven to the base of the volcano. Armed with a trusty guide and flashlights in hand, we began the steep climb that would take close to 2 hours to complete. We took plenty of breaks along the way, but once we finally reached the top, we were rewarded with a rainbow colored sunrise.
Overall, we really enjoyed our time in Bali. It may not have been the quiet paradise that's depicted in the movies, but it offered culture, natural beauty, and it was a great place to relax. We are on a little raft, just cruising down the Mekong Delta. <laughs> Loving the conical hat. Like your hat. I'm loving the hat. I need a hat of my own. Come on, we should be wearing this back in Canada. What's wrong with people? There's a little traffic jam over here. Hello. 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 Delta. And this is day number one and we just started off by sampling some tea with the honey and a few little snacks and now we're doing a little paddle boat uh, adventure down the Mekong. So this is the hillside town of Pai. It's about three and a half hours away from Chiang Mai. And this is where we've been spending the weekend. So we are staying at the Pai Chan Cottages and this is our private little bungalow. So let's go have a look inside. Hey, 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 come on in. This is our little humble little room here. You can see we got a nice Big size bed, mosquito net over here, which fortunately this time of the year we haven't had to be using very often. Because it's freezing at night. Yeah, it's freezing so that luckily the mosquitoes have all died. But the best part about this place are the views. Check out this. Rice fields. Just too cute and wrinkly. Look at that little nose. We've only got a few days left here in Thailand, and I've been hearing from friends raving about Pai for years. And I've always put off coming here, and this time I said, There's no way we're gonna leave Thailand without coming to Pai. And now I understand what all the fuss is about. This place is wonderful, it's one of the most relaxing towns I've ever visited. And we're going to show you around and you're going to get to see firsthand why we love it here. What you doing? I couldn't be any more relaxed than in this hammock right now. At this rate, I don't even know if we'll get into the town. <laughs>
reasons people come to Pai is just to relax and totally chill out. I mean, a lot of other destinations you go to visit temples, you go to do other types of things, but here it's just enjoying the scenery, wandering around, swinging on a hammock. Those are the top things to do, and I'm loving it so far. So we seem to have found Hippie Central just across the river. There's a cool little bar called Sunset Bar and it can be reached via a bamboo bridge. Shall we check it out? That was awesome. We crossed that rickety old bridge and then we came to some really cool looking guest houses. And now we're here in the fields. So one of the draws to Pai is being able to explore the countryside. And yesterday I rented my very first scooter. It only cost me $3 a day and I got a helmet with that. Um, and it was a great way to explore. I mean, I thought it was gonna be kind of tricky riding it for the first time, but it was a lot of fun. Well, you did well, didn't you? And it opened up a lot of the surrounding areas that, yeah. that would have been tough to reach by foot. Aside from chilling out and relaxing in Pai, one of the few things that we actually really want to do is to take a trip over and visit the hot springs. So we're here in Pai visiting the hot springs. This is the 35 degree pool, and I'm swinging like Tarzan. Well, not exactly, but I'd like to think that. <laughs> and that giant white Buddha over there is something I plan on visiting tomorrow morning when I wake up. Can't swing. I need an assistant to swing me. Sam, come swing me. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. No, Sam. Sam, no. Oh my god. <laughs> what are you doing? Okay, I just want to get you on the hammock. Do you want me to go flying? No. Okay, just go back on and say something. Go fetch me a drink. Today we are having a feast of a dinner. We are at a Cambodian restaurant and we have just ordered ourselves an eight course meal. <laughs> <laughs> this restaurant is called Angkor Pong and it's come highly recommended. So we have high expectations for this meal. That was a really good spring roll. It had some very fresh and zesty flavors and a little bit of seafood as well. So, so far so good. So next up we have the spare ribs and these do look good. Just melts in your mouth. 
so next up we are trying the amok, which is one of the most popular dishes in Cambodia. And amok is fish that has been coated in a coconut cream and then baked in a banana leaf. So let's see how that tastes. Hit the spot. I think she takes a second bite before I get any. Mm -hmm. And this is the one thing that I'm probably almost most excited about. The homemade green curry with chicken. I've got a slice of chicken. Wow. I can really taste the curry. And once again, just like the spare ribs, it just melts in your mouth. I barely even have to chew. Is it coconut based? I don't think it's that strongly coconut based, no. So up next is our shaved mango salad, which has some peanuts and mint leaves on top. Mm. Sweet, sir. It is sweet. It's also nice and crunchy because of the peanuts. And it has some nice spices. So it's really flavorful. Hey, you just took a second bite. Last but certainly not least is the fried water spinach. Now that's tasty, it's got kind of a buttery garlic flavor. Mm. Time for dessert. Tell us what you're having. And to finish off, we've got a sweet little treat, a tap tapioca-based pudding with banana. Oh, take a big bite. So sweet. So good. So we have finished our feast of a dinner. I must admit, when I first saw the platter being brought over, I thought, hmm, this is for two people. I think I could probably eat my own. But in the end, we still had food left over. Like, that was just so much to eat. It was so tasty, but it was really filling at the same time. So, good stuff. Good dinner. So the eight course platter is $14 for two people. And for those who want to come here, this restaurant is located right in the heart of Siem Reap, nearby the Central Market. You can't miss it. Today we are outside Siem Reap and we are exploring the temples of Angkor starting with Angkor Thom. The most fascinating thing about Bayon are the cold faces that have a hint of a smile. This massive complex has 54 towers with 216 faces on them.
we have the Terrace of the Elephants. It is 350 meters long. This was once used as a viewing platform from where you could watch the ceremonies that took place for the king. <laughs> well, we're traveling right now in Cambodia in April and it is the hottest time of the year here. It's always hot in Cambodia, but this is literally the worst month. I'm just sweating buckets. So a tip for people coming here, if you want to come in a bit of a cooler time, December, January, February, great time to come. It's also peak season here, so you will be sharing it with more tourists, but you won't be sweating as much. Waking up early in the morning certainly has its advantages. We are the first people to arrive at this temple, Bante Sre. This is one of the temples that we have been most excited to visit and we are officially the first ones here. Here we are inside the temple. This happens to be a Hindu temple and it is dedicated to the god Shiva. Most of the temples of Angkor were commissioned by powerful kings, but this temple in particular was not. It was commissioned by a Brahmin, which makes it quite unique. Because we came here early, we got a VIP tour. Normally, these areas are gated off, as you can see by the weight perimeter here and the rope. Where we are. of being the first on site can't be underestimated. I mean, anything to avoid those package tours is, is a good idea. There are many temples to choose from, but this one in particular, Bantis Ray, is considered to be the crown jewel of Angkorian art because it has some of the most exquisite and intricate carvings. This temple is located very far away from Siam Reap. We had to travel over an hour in a tuk-tuk, and I slept most of the way, but I hear it was a very scenic journey. Yes? <laughs> Along the way, we passed a lot of rural villages. We saw locals out doing various kinds of activities early in the morning, some farming related, some business. We saw bikes packed, you know, just to the total brim full of stuff. We saw a lot of different things and it was just a really cool trip to get out here.
it's only 7.20 in the morning and I've been dragged out of bed by someone to go visit the Batu Caves early in the day. And how are we getting there? Mm -hmm. We are taking the commuter train from KL Central. One ringgit each. It was cheap. <laughs> visiting the Batu Caves. It's only 13 kilometers north of Kuala Lumpur and this is an important Hindu shrine. The caves takes its name from the Batu River and is dedicated to Lord Murugan. Looks like it's feeding time for the pigeons over here. Money or food couldn't buy you friends. Here I am on step. Number one, I've only got 272 more of these bad boys to climb. monkeys and this is my first time seeing monkeys up close so it's all I'm taking pictures of forget the temple <laughs> finally 272 steps later we have made it to the top So this is actually my third time coming to the Batu Caves, but this is by far the earliest I've come. And what a difference it makes. There's hardly anyone here. It feels like we have the place to ourselves. We've had intimate encounters with pigeons, monkeys, roosters, there's a performance going on. My tip to anyone, come early. We beat the first two of the bus group here. Look at them, I'm coming. <laughs> ourselves with a vegetarian Indian feast. I swear I must have lost half my water and body weight going up and down those spicy caves. Okay, so I ordered myself a delicious roti which I'm going to 
going to enjoy right now. I am starving. probably about 7 in the morning and today we are doing a biking tour of Siem Reap. Here we are at our first stop, Temple Garden, and we were just politely kicked off of our bike. So a good tip, if you're taking your bike, you cannot explore the Temple Garden with it. You'll have to get off and walk. along the banks of the Siem Reap River which runs through the heart of the city and we are just going to be cycling the length of it. So you can see a lot of things along the river. There's a man over there fishing. Elephants! They're just statues. biking along the river. Sam of course is way ahead because he has giant legs. Oh there he is. Now that we've crossed the other side of the river we've gone from hotels and restaurants to more rural style Cambodian homes. We've been biking past lots of little communities along the side of the river and the kids have been really friendly so far. They keep running up to us and just waving hello and trying to chat, chat with these foreigners. So let's keep going. This afternoon we are going to be visiting the Golden Mount and to get there we will be taking public transportation, namely water taxis. When exploring Bangkok, one of my favorite ways of getting around is hopping on a river taxi. The system is very extensive. have blue tarps along the side that you have to lift up once the boat starts moving and that's because the river looks like that. 
you would not want to fall in there or get any of that water in your mouth. Oh, I don't even smell it. Woo! That's stinky. Tonight we are visiting the Sunday night market in Chiang Mai and right now we're at Tape Gate. This is where the market starts and it runs one kilometer into the old city. So we're going to be wandering around, sampling some food and showing you what it's like over here on a Sunday. lot of handicrafts here at this market for example silk scarves uh, wood carvings you can get some paintings they have ceramics silverware lots of jewelry I mean you can browse here for hours on end and trinkets galore Walking around in the night market, you can just head over here, sit down, relax, and get a nice Thai food massage. 30 minutes for two dollars, right? Probably. It's 80 baht for the foot massage. You can get a cheaper one at the Chiang Mai Park. Well, you sure loaded up with some tasty treats. Okay, so this is my second dinner. I have some deep fried tempura eggplant with sweet and sour sauce on top, and fresh spring rolls with carrots and cilantro, maybe, and some noodles. Okay, try one of them. Okay. And that would be? It tastes very healthy. <laughs> <laughs> the fresh roll. <laughs> it is good? Mm. It's not as flavorful as I would have hoped. Here, have a look. It's, it's actually bean sprouts, not noodles. I was wrong. Bean sprouts and tofu and some carrots. And what's this over here? Well, I must have been a monkey in a past life because whenever I get a chance to try a banana, I'm always in there. And this is the deep fried version. Okay. So it's already kind of smushed up here. 
Awesome. Does it have some kind of special sauce over top? No, there's no special sauce. It's just deep fried. And the banana is really mushy and moist in the inside. Okay, this is my tempura eggplant. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, that tastes a lot better. It's almost like a french fry. Can I say that? Yep, it has a nice sweet and sour sauce over top. It's, it's very oily, um, but that means it's very flavorful. French fry on a stick. Concludes our visit to the hectic Chiang Mai Sunday night market. Today we are visiting a place that is an important part of Georgetown's heritage, the clan jetties. These are the last bastions of old Chinese settlements. One of the things that has surprised me most about visiting the clan jetties is that people live here with their pets. So even though their houses are on stilts above the water, they still keep dogs, cats, and it works. <laughs> and here we found some friendly little doggies. Yes. Leave it to me to find puppies. Hello! Oh! Cats? Hello, cat. It's purring. Cat, let's steal you. Let's take you home. Yes. You can fit in my backpack. <laughs> Well, we've encountered a lot of friendly cats and dogs, but not this one. Houses in this area are built on stilts over the water and they even have a temple. And here's a temple on stilts that we were looking to find. is now part of the Heritage Trail and it was established roughly 150 years ago. So there are several distinct jetties along this area. In fact, there were seven at one time. One just burnt down and now we are visiting the Chu Jetty. So 
how are we feeling? Feeling good, just resting on someone's porch, I imagine. The stilt villages here actually remind me quite a bit of the ones I visited while in Brunei, which are called the Kampong Air. And those were even quite a bit bigger, but these are still very fascinating. In the back of one of these jetties, there's the most random Santa Claus poster in the back. Here we are visiting a market again, and that can only mean one thing, we are taking a cooking course yet again. Today we are going to be learning how to make Lao food, and our first stop is the Fusi Market. It's the biggest market in Luang Prabang, and apparently it opens at 4 in the morning. Cooking class today, it's awesome surprise. We've got this lush garden setting. It feels like we're just walking into someone's backyard. Almost in Laos cook. His wife and daughter cook for family, not husband and son cook for family. This is culture. We don't put much sugar in Lao cooking like Thai food. You see, you taste Thai food, it tastes milky creamy, sweetly, because they add lots of coconut milk, lots of sugar. That's why the food tastes like that. Love food, when you eat, tastes lots of herb, lots of texture. This is love food. It's not mean Thai food not tasty. Thai food very tasty, but we are taste different too. And shallots, and that's it. <laughs> Time to try your tomato dip. Wow. I made mine really spicy accidentally. I thought we were cooking this. So you're making your little. So yeah, make a little ball with the rice. Medium sticky spice rice. Why not? Mm. <laughs> Dip it in here. I don't want to taste And how is it? Mm. It has a real kick to it, but it's so good. It has lemon juice, hot peppers, garlic. I like that. <laughs> so I'd like to point out the salmon and I are making the exact same dish. This is his sauce. <laughs> this is mine. What are you missing? Just about everything. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're making the mok pa fish and you are going to show us how to wrap it. Hard, Audrey. Amazing. Oh, be quiet. Um, it's gonna taste amazing. amazing. So we're cooking our buffalo meat now. So here we have our buffalo salad. So we we stir fried some buffalo meat, and we also added bean sprouts. There's banana flowers. We have string beans, hot chilies, and mint leaves. So we're going to be rolling this up in lettuce leaves. It's kind of like a little fresh roll. This morning we are venturing up to Doi Suthep and there's a temple atop the mountain overlooking Chiang Mai. So we're going to be taking a red song tao to get there and hopefully the views of the city will be amazing. Here's the Song Tao crew. Say hi. 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 We're going to Doi Suthep. Yeah. Yeah. Build up a lactic acid. vehicle and this is our first vantage point. Unfortunately it's still a bit hazy outside so we don't have a great view at the moment. But the city is there somewhere. So the 
long climb begins. I'm not entirely sure how many steps we have to go, but I know it's going to be a long way. I think there's over 300. <laughs> Mai from up here, but today it's just really hazy, so there's a cloud hanging over the city. We can't really see much, which is unfortunate. Their visit to Doi Si Thep. It's definitely different than what I expected. I was kind of expecting this quaint little temple on top of a hill, and instead, it's an extremely popular tourist attraction. It's really crowded over here. I would say the exterior of Doi Si Thep is quite similar to a lot of the other wats we have visited here in Chiang Mai. However, the highlight for me was actually going inside the temple because there's a courtyard with a golden stupa and you can walk around, light candles, there's incense burning, so that was a nicer experience. Lunchtime here in Malacca, so we're about to go to a Babanonia type of restaurant, which is a mix of Chinese and Malaysian cuisine. And this is a real hole in the wall kind of place. It is. Spicy curry, a mixture of Malay and Chinese elements. So let's, let's take a look. Here. It is a coconut based curry soup and it has curd puffs, fish sticks, shrimp, clams added to it. Very flavorful. Mm. So, what I'm having next is called rojak, that's a, the Malay word for mixture. It's a refreshing salad. Yes, so take a look over here. And it's made using fruits and vegetables. So it has pineapple, cucumbers, bean sprouts. It's just a really nice, refreshing salad on a hot day. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. The last of our four dishes is called papaya. It is a spring roll, has an outside like a crepe. And I'll show you the ingredients here. It is, has a sweet bean and soy sauce. It often has turnips, bean sprouts, Sort of omelet type carrots, lettuce, tofu, peanuts on top. It's got everything going on. Take a bite. Classy. Mm -hmm. When the lime juice mm -hmm. is here. Mm -hmm. Beat the heat, we have some lime juice. Is that refreshing? Mm -hmm. 
So what's been your favorite dish so far? I actually like this one here. The, the Nona dumpling. Oh. I've never had this one before. I've tried the others, but this is my first time. Okay, take a big bite and tell us why you like it. Right, if I can. <laughs> Struggling. Struggling. Well, what I really like about the glutinous rice is a really unique kind of like coating for the dumpling. Also, it's quite sweet inside. Hard to go around with sweet foods when it comes to me and my taste buds. <laughs> and what is Miss Audrey's favorite? Well, I've really enjoyed the rice dumplings as well, but I think my absolute favorite has been this salad over here. I haven't eaten fresh fruits and vegetables in almost a year because in Korea they cost a fortune, so I'm in heaven right now. I'm just eating on... What you got right now? Oh, pineapple? Which one? Yeah, this is a pineapple. Mm, mm -hmm. Nice sweet treat and the coating on the salad is delicious as well. And it's a sweet sauce with peanuts on top, so it's just perfect. Oh so for the next two days we are doing a tour of Halong Bay. So here we are aboard our ship our lovely home at sea, so we're going to give you a tour of the place. on the deck. How are you enjoying the views? Uh, okay. <laughs> lots of activities while we've been at Halong Bay. There's been kayaking and exploring caves and this morning we're spending a bit of time at a private beach. Okay so Sam you are revisiting Halong Bay for the second time, yes? Indeed I am. Okay so tell us what's been your favorite part this time around and how has it changed? Well, it actually hasn't changed too much. This tour is quite similar to the one I did before. Uh, previously, I did a three-day tour. This time, we're doing a two-day. Two days, I think, is plenty. We've done a lot of different fun activities. I've just enjoyed being on the boat, all the gorgeous scenery, the mountains, the Karst Mountain. Well, this has been my first time to Halong Bay, so obviously, what has impressed me the most is the scenery, because it just looks out of this world. It's unlike anything I've ever seen before. So I've really enjoyed just hanging out on the top deck, reading a book, checking out the views, and also the food aboard has been really nice. Hello. Hello. Cabin fever. <laughs> okay, we've been here maybe half an hour. It's already messy. Hey. I blame it on this person. No.
here we are, just biking through the streets of Hoi An. Hello! So here we have our little ticket for sightseeing around Hoi An. And the way it works is that you pay six dollars and you get a ticket that grants you access into five different historic sites around town. And you just show up at the entrance, they snip off one of these little tabs and that's good to go. Works. You're good to go. Here we are at the Japanese Cover Bridge. It was built in 1593. So construction on this bridge began on the year of the monkey and it finished on the year of the dog. And for that reason, one side of the bridge is guarded by a monkey and the other by a dog. popular pedestrian bridge in town. Standing here at a small square and this is where a lot of fabulous performances take place, especially at night time. Chu Assembly Hall, it's a place of worship for the Cantonese community. Next, we are visiting the Assembly Hall of the Fujian Chinese. This place now acts as a temple to the goddess Tian Hao, who is from the Fujian province in China. Restaurant Capitan, and they serve up amazing Indian food. If you 
like rich, savory curries and buttery knots, oh, have you come to the right place. things out here by far are the floating villages. We survived our kayaking experience in Halong Bay. Almost crashed into the cliff. Yes. It was kind of scary. It's a bit stressful, especially because whenever the big boats, the junks go past, they create these little waves and like kayaks. And you have to get out of the way of the junk too. That's a bit yeah. stressful. <laughs> yeah, but it was fun. Yeah. It was a fun way to see the bay. 
So today we are having lunch at a little place called the Peppermint Cafe. This is in some little back alley in Chiang Mai and we're sitting outside just right by the street and we're going to enjoy some more northern Thai food. And you know how much we like our back alley restaurants. Original Thai food and good shakes. Looks like you got just that. Mm -hmm. So today we are having a dish that is called cow soy. And if you just look down over here, you can see that it kind of looks like a curry type soup. And we have regular boiled noodles, some crispy noodles, and chicken over top. So this is a Burmese influenced dish from Northern Thailand and it literally means cut rice. This is one of Northern Thailand's most famous dishes. I've had this dish once before and I think my favorite part is the combination of the soft egg noodles mixed in with the crispy ones. It's just a nice crunchy soft texture and the curry sauce gives it a bit of an extra kick. So here we go. I love coconut based curries and this is quite similar to Masaman curry. This is a really popular street food in Northern Thailand, but it's actually quite hard to find overseas in Thai restaurants. So that means you have to come to Northern Thailand and try it for yourself. Empty plate over here, a sign of a good meal. Overall, that meal was delicious and coming in at just 59 baht per dish, what value? Mm -hmm. into coming here. I was told it was going to be a short, oh, it's a 10 minute walk from Chinatown. We're right around the corner and we've been walking for 45 minutes in circles and then uphill. And I am covered in sweat and a bird just flew by me. So we're at KL Bird Park, the largest walk-in aviary in the world. And that means the birds can fly freely around the park. home to over 3,000 birds in more than 200 species and so far we have seen lovebirds, flamingos, peacocks and birds that we don't even know what they are. Here 
is the feeding area and as you can see the birds get a really nice diet of papayas and bananas. Jurassic Park with birds instead of dinosaurs. So I'm going to choose two birds and pose with them. Wish me luck. So this is the selection you've got. How about that one? Are you friendly? Uh, yeah. Friendly. Having fun. <laughs> You're great. So we can feed lorries for like two ringgit, which is about you know, 70 cents, so why not? So Sam, tell us about your new friends here. Who I've are got they? four little friends and we're having a feeding party right now. This was a really fun experience. Although it's not the cheapest thing to do in kale, it's something we both highly recommend. And wear bug spray. So today we are setting out on a two-day hike through Safa. And we are just walking through the town. We've picked up a few more people who are joining us. And we've already picked up some, some local buddies who will be walking with us, it seems. What's your name? is going to be divided into three sections and the first village that we will be visiting is called Lao Chai. That's about eight kilometers from where we started out and we're two kilometers into the trek so far. It's getting really hot and I'm sweaty so let's keep going. 
Tell us about the scenery. The scenery here is stunning. Unbelievable. Everywhere we walk. Here, there's been a bit of a landslide that's blocking the road into the town. <laughs> it's like, hey. Hey. <laughs> I thought I heard a waterfall down there. It turns out it's just a river. <laughs> Still impressive. So after several kilometers of hiking, <laughs> we're finally approaching the village of Lao Chai down below. So we are about to cross this bridge into town and it is not for those who have vertigo because there are no railings on this bridge. Two hours of hiking, we've reached our first destination point, Lao Chai Village. And it's time for lunch. And I'm pretty hungry. How about you? I am starving. I can't wait to get there fast enough. It's just over there where the bridge is. That's Lao Chai. For lunch today, we are eating at one of our favorite restaurants in Luang Prabang. It's called Tamarind and it focuses on Lao food. So we're going to be showing you some traditional dishes. So this over here is called Nam Mat Kam and it's a tamarind cooler. You get a nice little bamboo straw and it's a really sweet and sour drink. It's refreshing but a little tart. I really like it. Mm. Next up we have our dipping platter. So this over here is a coriander pickle. Next we have an eggplant dip, tomato dip. We have a paste made from buffalo skin. We have some seaweed chips and then some vegetables that we can use with the sauce. So let's dig in. And that all goes together, of course, with our sticky rice. Ooh. So Sam is going to demonstrate for so this us. This is how you eat it, you just kind of put together a little ball like that and then you can pick a different dip I'll try the buffalo sauce here put it together just like that pop it in your mouth delicious is it a bit spicy? oh yeah Ooh. this one's really spicy actually 
Finger food, finger food, yes. That's a huge ball. Little ball. <laughs> That's not little. Okay. And I will go with the aubergine. Dark room. Ah. Slammed it down. She's got her happy face on. It's so good. It's not just aubergine. We've added spices, there's coriander, there's anise. It's just an explosion of flavors. So this is the second plate we've ordered. Again, here we have a vegetable pickle. This is a pork salad that also has banana flowers. We have a pork sausage. Here's some buffalo jerky, Sam's favorite. Oh yeah. And over here we have some little lettuce rolls that are stuffed with different dips, different sauces. So we'll be trying those. Okay, buffalo jerky time. I'm off a little piece of this buffalo jerky and this is my favorite. <laughs> Chewy, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's very chewy, like any kind of jerky, but this is probably the sweetest jerky I've ever had. I can't remember ever tasting anything quite this sweet in jerky form. <laughs> so I'm going to try this leafy roll over here. Hmm. I taste lemongrass. It's something sweet. Like a yam, almost, but... I'm really not sure what it is. It could be some local thing. <laughs> We've ordered so much food, we almost forgot about this next dish. But it's time for me to do the honors. I'm going to unveil our steamed fish, which comes wrapped in a banana leaf. And it's called mokpa. Let's see what's in here. It's like opening a present. I know, it's like Christmas on a plate. Oh, wow. There it is. See the steam coming off it. Mm, it's gonna be good. And it comes with a side of vegetables. So let's not forget about those. Here are those. Here we go. Okay, right, taste time for test. the first bite. So this is cooked in a dill and basil sauce. It just melts in your mouth. It is so soft, and so flavorful, it's delicious. Now for dessert, we are having something that's called cow gam. It's purple sticky rice that has been cooked in coconut milk, and it also has banana and sesame seeds on top. So look down here. It looks amazing. And if that weren't enough, we get a little shot of tamarind sauce, which we can pour over top. So I'm going to try it the natural way without the tamarind sauce first. Let's see. Mm. It's so fragrant. Mm. Nice and sweet. Very sweet. You can definitely taste the coconut. And it's a nice sticky rice with a bit of a nutty texture. I like it. All right, let's try this with some tamarind sauce and a big chunk of banana. gives it a kick, a bit of spice, still really sweet. So that splendid feast came to just over $18, 151,000 kip, which we think was excellent value. It's a bit of a gourmet type of restaurant and it's right by the river. You've got awesome views from here. Second 
very hot and sweaty ride through a floating market. There were small little vessels selling things like fresh fruit and ice cold coffee. So we sat there, enjoyed the scenery and ate some food. They literally had the perfect strategy down. They just had us sitting there for like 15-20 minutes. We were sweating profusely and they were selling us cold drinks. They must have made a fortune. ordered a set for two people that focuses on northern Thai dishes so we are going to get a sampling of different curries that come along with sticky rice. And this is what it might look like. Our first dish has arrived and it's called Khao Soi and it is fried noodles on top of a hearty curry. Ooh, that looks amazing. It does. Mm, let's dig into that baby. Try my first fried noodle. Fried noodle. I've never had anything like this. Mm. It's kind of nice. Ooh, and the curry is kind of spicy. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? A very flavorful, spicy curry. I can tell it's made out of from coconut milk. It's not a very thick curry, it's more stew-like and soupy, but it's really nice on a warm day like this. I'm enjoying it. Inside. So a lot of the northern Thai dishes have pork in them. So as you can see over here, we've got a pork sausage. We have something that looks like ground pork with some nice green herbs. And this might also be pork if you ask me. One of the characteristic elements of northern Thai food is that you eat your side dishes with sticky rice. Ooh, this is going to be tasty. Not sure if I'm supposed to be using my hands or not, but since it's sticky rice, I am. <laughs> We're gonna dip it over here. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. Spicy, sweet. This one is surprisingly sweet. So I'm gonna try one of these little puffs and another kind of dipping sauce here. Mm. That looks like it could be spicy. Yeah. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Burning your mouth. So we also have a nice pumpkin stew over here. Tofu. What tofu? <laughs> spicy? Not spicy, just really hot. <laughs> Okay, what's next? So next up in the dishes to try here would be the ground pork. Awesome. Mm. 
this Looks one like it's looks been tasty. marinated in a nice little sauce. Mm. Very strong flavor with the sauce. It's like it looks like soy sauce, but oh, that's hard going down. Very tasty though. <laughs> <laughs> so it's only our first week in Chiang Mai in northern Thailand, but we are quickly discovering that this part of the country has a lot to offer in the cooking department. Normally when you think Thai food, you think, oh, pad Thai, green curries, but really there is so much variety here and like today we had dishes that we've never even heard of before and they were so tasty. So And we still don't even know exactly what they are. <laughs> yes, we don't know the names. I'm sure we will learn them over the course of our time here, but for now what we can tell you is northern Thai food is really tasty. So just when we thought the meal was finally over, we are so stuffed. They bring dessert out for us and it is amazing. So here you can see bananas. It's just slices of bananas in a sweet, thick coconut cream. And it's amazing, really. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh yeah, mm -mm. need to try it. Mm -mm. Mm. <laughs> I wanna see your face when you bite into that. <laughs> wow. It almost has a bit of rum caramel type flavor, which really accentuates the coconut milk. That was seriously the feast of feasts. We paid 300 baht in total for that, which is roughly 10 US dollars, and it was worth every penny, or should I say every baht. Towers are brilliant by day, but wow, do they ever shine at night. time coming to the Petronas Towers and having seen it during the day and at night I have to say I prefer it at night a lot more. They have a really cool light show that takes place. There's also a lot more people who come to watch the show. Patronus Towers at night, a sight to behold. Today we are standing in front of Malaysia's most iconic buildings, the Patronus Towers. There are lots of different vantage points around the park so that you can get your shot with the Petronas Towers and this is one of them. The Petronas Towers took six years to build and they were the tallest building in Asia until Taipei 101 took them over. And I've been to Taipei 101 and these are more impressive. So these towers were designed by an Argentinian architect named Cesar Pelli. Represent. Represent because why? We're <laughs> Oh, because I grew up in Argentina. <laughs> there you go. The double-decker sky bridge here connects the two towers together. It's quite awesome. So my question is, is this a water fountain or can I actually go swimming in there?
now we are at another temple called Priyakan, which means sacred sword. And this temple is believed to have been a university that housed over a thousand teachers. Is one of our favorite temples. The reason why we really like it so much is that it's just not overcrowded. Like we've come here, mind you we've come early in the morning but there's hardly anyone here and it has that kind of eerie feel to it similar to Taprom but without all the crowds so you can be walking through and you feel like you're going through a maze. It's really quite fascinating. So people who have come through this temple have picked up some rocks and stacked them into a little formation and I do believe this has a special meaning in Buddhism. One of the top things to do when you're visiting Georgetown is to take a rickshaw tour and that's exactly what we're going to do. This is our colorful little ride right here. Wait, what's your name? Harry. Harry, nice to meet you. Bye. <laughs> We got some mighty big waves coming here. Oh. Oh. So we got soaked by a massive wave. We sure did. And it's actually kind of refreshing now, so I'm kind of happy about it. And our camera survived it, so not too bad actually. <laughs> This is cute! 
So this is a Chinese temple? Yes, and very old temple. Oh wow. 100 years old, more than So a tour around historic Georgetown will reveal some crumbling colonial architecture as Audrey likes to say. No I don't. Here is St. George Church. The English come here, this is yeah. a black car. Oh, they drive Before this the car. Before the British come here, the governor, British governor used the car. Oh, that's, oh, that's the, the old governor's car. Yeah. Where are you? So this is the old train that used to travel up Penang Hill carrying passengers up. A bamboo ship. A bamboo wow. ship, yeah. wow. This is Kasi Mustafa, one of our favorite restaurants in Georgetown to get roti. Yep, and yep. it is noticeable for its bright green and yellow paint. Final stop, our hotel. So today we are having dinner at a great little restaurant. It's located right across from the Putaraya bus terminal in Kuala Lumpur. And it's Indian food, my favorite. Nothing like refreshing food drinks to start your meal. Here's our flat. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. And the roti chanai is actually the Malaysian form of the Indian flatbread. Oh yeah! What we're having here is roti chanai. And roti means bread in Hindi and Malay. Chanai and Malay means to roll out here. How do you roll it out? Show us. Nice. It's made with fat, egg, flour, water. And in the special cases where there's special ingredients, like this one right here. Sam's feeling a little shy because there's people watching him eat right now. Is it the freckles? Is it the t-shirt? Is it because he's using his hands? What could it be? <laughs> There are 
two ways to eat, roti chanai, by hand or by utensil, and believe me, I will not give up an opportunity to use my hand. Demonstrate for us. Oh, mix it up real good. Ew, that's sloppy. <laughs> you just wiped it on your pan. No, I did. And Audrey here will be having it using utensils. Well, I, on the other hand, am eating like a lady and using a fork and spoon. Keeping it classy. Countryside tour today of basketball. We're gonna be buying some sticky rice wrapped up in a bamboo wrapper. Once it's been cooked, you just kind of crack the bamboo and peel it down, and there you have the rice. It's been mixed with coconut cream and some black beans. Oh, it looks very good. tasty. It smells great. Take a bite. How do you like it? It's delicious. It's like you can totally tell it's been made with coconut, but there hasn't been a lot of extra sugar. So it's it's definitely a little bit sweet, but it's not too sweet. I really like it. So this lovely snack is only 60 US cents. Not bad. All right, brave man, going to eat a little cricket there. Time to have a cricket. And this is my first time eating one? Yeah. <laughs> Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> okay, big bite. Stick it in your mouth. You tried one as well. Oh, no, no, no. That's actually really good. Oh, very good. Wow. It's salt, salty, a little bit sweet, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. Oh. Oh, Eat one another more. one. Try one more. There we go. Mm. You liked it? Mm. So we're here at the fish market now. We can certainly smell all the fish all around here. It's just, wow, overwhelming. And we're gonna just uh, check out to see what was here. To eat. So here is a form of preserved fermented fish that our guy just told us tastes a little bit like cheese. So what's this here? The fish paste, where they ferment it here. Uh -huh. Just a lot of salt. It's a lot of salt. So that's ready to eat. Uh, yes. Take the salt out and the fish inside. You don't wrap plastic bag around, the insect is gonna buy it. Oh. oh, so there's plastic wrapped around these guava fruits to prevent insects from eating them. So we call a plastic bag fruit. <laughs> <laughs> 
for fill up inside the pillows or mattress. Ah. So we use this one. It looks really soft. Yeah, very soft. You can touch. Oh, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. And these are these are the seeds for new plants. Yes, for seeds? new plants. Yeah. Where where it comes from the tree right there? It's the big one over there. Oh, okay. The big. time in Saigon is over. We're now taking a train to Nachong for beach time. Yes. And that's gonna make one of us very happy. Who would that be? Oh yeah. I just love the beaches. He wants more freckles. I do. I need them. I don't have enough. So we have been eating local foods the whole time. We have been here. Check that out. That is so Vietnamese. What is that? <laughs> I think they might call that pizza. Ice cafe. thousand dong for that, which is about 75 cents. And oh, is it ever good? It's made with condensed milk and has copious amounts of sugar. Better than ice caps of Tim Hortons back home. Yeah. Okay, aside from the ice cap, I think we need to discuss Sam's new look over here. Pretty obvious change, right? What, what is that? Ooh, what is that? That's my little mustache. It's awesome. You love it. Throwback from the Sam. So there are two different classes in this train. We are traveling in the soft seat section, which has AC and really cushiony chairs. Then you also have hard benches with fans. Yeah, big difference. I'm glad we got these ones. Yeah. It's a lot more comfortable. We be having chicken for breakfast. One of my favorite snacks of all, fried spring rolls. And I get to eat them on the train.
So today we are doing something that I've been wanting to do ever since we got to Hoi An, and that is shopping. There are said to be over 200 different tailors just in Hoi An alone. This is a city where you come to have your clothes custom made. You can get dresses, shirts, suits, shoes, purses, anything made. And they can copy the latest designs. You just have to show them a magazine with what you want and they'll recreate it for you. Shopping for clothes, especially dresses, this is not my realm of expertise. Shopping. Here. Having fun changing over there. Um, having trouble getting <laughs> into my dress. Ooh, it looks nice. You like it? <laughs> you? Yeah, it feels like the rest. Yeah, if it was smaller, I can do it a little smaller. Yeah. Number two. And how do you like this one? Nice. My color. It's got the flowers. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. I like yeah, it. I can do a little smaller. Yeah, a little smaller in the yeah, back. So you can make smaller? Yeah, I oh, can. Oh, good. You like it? I do. Yes, you like all three of them? A little so smaller. Uh, we stay here two more days. Two more days. Yes. So what are we having done right now? Getting my dresses made so that they fit me properly. Where are you going now, uh, Mo? After here, we go to Hanoi. Very far away. dresses to get some minor alterations done on them. I think they were a little too big. They were a little too big on me, but I'm so excited for them to be pretty. So, I'm quite pleased with my purchases. I ended up getting three dresses. And I probably could have gotten more because the lady just kept pushing me, try this one, try that one. And she really wanted you to get that fourth dress. Oh yeah, but we had to cut it off at three. So overall we paid $18 per dress plus a slight discount and that included alterations and everything. So a little tip for anyone who's thinking of going shopping in Hoi An, I would say just walk around the different streets, see what the shops have to offer, see what styles you like, and then go into a store and don't be afraid to bargain a little and ask for different patterns, different fabrics, they can make anything you want. So the journey to Laos is actually a three-day trip. Day one involves driving from Chiang Mai to Chiang Kong, which is at the border between Laos and Thailand. Then day two, we finally get on the boat and we travel from Chiang Kong cross the border and arrive in Pak Bent and the last day, the third day, it's nine hours on a boat all the way from Pak Bent to Luang Prabang. We're going to tell you all about our journey, the pros, the cons, the things that are great, what wasn't so great. But first, this is the actual trip.
So overall conclusions about this trip. We definitely recommend taking the slow boat from Thailand to Laos. However, doing a three day tour is something we would definitely reconsider. So perhaps a lot of our negatives come from the fact that we did a budget tour and we took the option that was only 2400 baht. So some of the things we didn't like so much was that we were always leaving behind schedule. Sometimes we would be waiting around for an hour before anything happened. Also, when it came to accommodations, the hotels weren't amazing. Our first night was spent at a former jail and it kind of felt a bit spartan. There was no hot water, so we couldn't shower. In terms of food, uh, I would call it prison food. It was boiled cabbage and just overcooked rice. So those were some of the cons. I think you're being a little bit too kind with your description of the hotel. It was literally the hardest bed I've ever slept on. I would have been more comfortable on a rock. So if I had to do this trip over again, I would definitely do it independently. You can take a bus from Chiang Mai or other northern Thai cities all the way to the border, cross it yourself, find your own accommodations, find something that's a little bit better, more suitable than what we stayed at. Also, you can buy your own boat tickets as well. And by showing up early at the pier and purchasing it yourself, that ensures you get a good seat. And that's the key to enjoying your experience going down the Mekong. So a few tips to make the trip a bit more pleasant would be show up early. You want to be the first person on the boat so you can choose the best seats. You don't want to be near the front because the views aren't that great and you're kind of sitting sideways and you don't want to be near the back because the engine is rambling and it's incredibly loud. You want to choose a seat in the middle. Also, you'll want to bring a cushion or a pillow just in case you end up seating on the wooden seats. Those are not very comfortable. And you'll also want to stock up on lots of food, bring sandwiches, pastries, whatever it is you'll want to eat because it's a long trip and on the boat they just have chips and tea and Cups noodles, of noodles in a cup. So. Hawker centers, which are open air food stall complexes, serve up a variety of inexpensive food. From Chinese to Indian and Malaysian to Indonesian, there is a diverse selection of cuisine to choose from. Our first lunch here in Singapore at a hawker center and I've ordered myself some Chinese food. I have some Hainanese chicken rice which looks absolutely delicious. And I've got a butter chicken with butter naan right down here. So here is my dish. It's just a bit of plain rice and some chicken with crispy skin on the outside and despite it looking a bit bland it's actually quite tasty. hard not to enjoy butter chicken. This is awesome. A few more snacks to complete the meal. What are they? So this is a combination of satay and dim sum. So we have sweet potato here. This one is yam. We've got tofu cubes over here. This one is prawn. And I believe that is a shrimp dumpling. So I'm going for something a little sweet here. I have some kind of yam spring roll. Should I dip it in peanut sauce? No, Probably just not. have it. Mm. Is it sweet? It is. It tastes like a sweet potato, except it's white. So this crab didn't go on a skewer and it will taste good in the peanut sauce, I'm pretty sure. Mix that around, mix that bad boy around. Oh. <laughs> What's happening over there? Oh. Kind of chewy? Here's the crab! <laughs> Whoa, nice claw. Oh, that's delicious. They're so juicy inside. Mm. So as budget travelers, these hawker centers in Singapore are a real find because it is really expensive in Singapore. It's one of the most expensive cities in all of Asia, certainly the most expensive in Southeast Asia. And you can find dishes here for between you know, four to 10 Singaporean dollars and it's so much cheaper than eating in a restaurant. And I like the variety that you find at the hawker centers. For example, today we had some Indian food, Chinese food, and we also saw stands selling Malaysian food, Singaporean dishes, and lots of other things. This hawker center is by the Singapore Flyer, but you can find them all throughout the city.
Hello. 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 We are now visiting Taprom, which is a Buddhist temple where the jungle just dominates the architecture. Here the buildings are wrapped in trees, some of the entrances are blocked. And Indiana Jones would feel right at home here at this temple. In fact, it was used for the set of Tomb Raider starring Angelina Jolie. It's decaying, it's crumbling, but it's a great place to explore. This is an example of nature taking over the temple. Here you have this massive tree that's just straddling a wall, really. Some parts of the temple have been completely destroyed over the centuries, which actually creates quite a fascinating atmosphere. I first visited Top Rom back in 2008, and wow, was it an entirely different experience. There was hardly anyone. I was able to walk around without, you know, encountering mass crowds. It's completely different this time. And instead of sort of lamenting about it and, you know, just getting really negative and down about it, what I've been actually doing is just taking a lot of time lapse shots. I'm using the crowds and the people as sort of a, you know, backdrop for filming. And that's what I'm going to do throughout this entire time that I'm here exploring the temples of Angkor. A much quieter alternative once you've explored the temple is to actually just to walk around the perimeter. It's quite peaceful here. to eat so today we have signed up for a cooking course where we're going to learn how to make some of our favorite Thai dishes right now we're at the local market so we're just gonna be walking around picking out some of the ingredients we'll need today for the class and yeah let's have a look judging from the amount of cooking videos we make you would probably think that we're constantly in the kitchen that we always like to cook that could be further from the truth most of the time when we're on the road we eat out so this is actually kind of an excuse to get into the kitchen to cook, to actually try to make food, because normally we don't do that. We have now arrived at the Thai Farm Cooking School. So we drove about 17 kilometers outside of Chiang Mai and it's a completely different world out here. We're just surrounded by nature and an organic farm and we're actually going to be picking a lot of the vegetables from here. We had a choice between doing a cooking course in the city or going out to the countryside and I think we've made the right decision. Now, clean already. Mm -hmm. inside, no? I would like you to pick by yourself the holy basil. Oh, okay. yeah. Lagging 
a little behind, right? Oh, come on. Master Chef here. Look at that. Perfection. No, I really am lagging behind. I better hustle up. Okay, so I'm making a yellow curry today. So this is mine. This is what I created. And Sam went for the green curry. So this is his. Yeah. And I'd like to point out, I don't think he did a very good job. Oh, that Check just fell. Out. That what's, just fell in there. What's this? Whatever. Whole chunks. <laughs> I, F. You get an F. <laughs> Alright, it's boiling. It's not supposed to boil. Right. So we're making the tom yum soup. Mine is going to have shrimp. And I've got my coconut milk here. So I'm going to be adding some ingredients. Mushrooms. So I'm ready to try my fine creation. This is my tom yum with shrimp. Mm. I made mine really sweet. I think maybe I put in too much sugar, but it's kind of nice. It's it's creamy, so I use coconut as a base. You need to add more salt or fish sauce then. Mm. Mine does need more salt. How's yours? You look like a farmer drinking soup. Keeping this half, I swear. No, mine, I'm quite happy with mine. I put quite a bit of salt in it, and I also put fish sauce, so. And Making my yellow curry now. Just stirring the coconut milk. So I put in my the curry paste I made earlier. There's also some pumpkin and potatoes. And I accidentally added some leaves that I wasn't supposed to, but cheater. So now that we've chopped everything up, we're going to be throwing this into the wok and making our stir fried rice. What's wrong about this dish? It's not a stir fried rice, it's just a vegetable stir fry. Um, so it's really good. I made one with chicken and string beans and mushrooms. And here is my yellow curry with potatoes and pumpkin. Is it good? Mm -hmm. So at this point in the day, I'm getting completely stuffed. I actually wouldn't mind taking a siesta right now, but we're gonna be making two more dishes. I am gonna be making a pad thai and then a mango sticky rice. So suffering from what my family calls bulbous plumptitude. Making pad thai. Your favorite. And here is my pad thai. Probably one of the easier thai dishes you can make. Okay, so we saved the very best for last. Here we have our favorite thai dessert, mango sticky rice. And it has some, um, I think, deep fried mung bean on top. It's crispy. Mm, this is going to be good. Alright, let's check out that first bite. It's nice and coconutty. It's amazing. Mm. So overall, that was a really cool experience, learning how to cook Thai food. I made five different dishes. I'm beyond full. Like, I feel like I'm ready to hibernate now. So this was 1100 baht. It's like lunch and dinner. And the thing I really liked about this particular school was that it was out in the countryside. We were able to get out of the city, away from the pollution and whatnot just have a really cool organic cooking experience. Today we're in Saigon, one of the most hectic and chaotic cities in Southeast Asia, and we're gonna show you the main attractions. And the best souvenir to take back home, weasel coffee. So that's coffee that's been pooped out of a weasel, in case you were wondering. <laughs> Looks a little bit like an O. Henry bar. So there's a lot of exotic things you can buy in Vietnam. Nothing more so than snake wine. Snake wine, here we go. We also have some very cool chocolates over here in the shape of conical hats. Or you can get your own durian, durian chocolate. Tasty. 
Our first stop today is the War Remnants Museum in Saigon. This museum chronicles the war from the perspective of the north side. So we just finished visiting the War Remnants Museum and inside it's divided into several galleries. I would say that the most impacting gallery is the one that focuses on the results of Agent Orange. And Agent Orange was a defoliant used to get rid of the leaves in the jungle so that it would make warfare easier. But the thing is that the toxins affected people decades later. So someone who had been exposed to the toxins when they were 12 years old when they had children at 25, most of those kids were born with deformities and like thousands of people in Vietnam are affected by this. We're here at Tin Hao Temple dedicated to the goddess of the sea. So many years ago, this is where people would have come to pray for protection before a long sea journey. Over here they're burning the used incense sticks. Spiral cones that you see burning up there are actually incense sticks and they burn for three months. So if a family wants to have good luck, they come to the temple, they write their name and their date of birth on a little ribbon and that's attached to the incense stick and it just burns there for three months and you're lucky the whole time. Next up, it's time to go shopping at the Bin Tay Market. Let's see what we can buy. The market is a bustling hive of activity. You can buy just about anything here. We have some very forceful saleswomen over here. One lady grabbed onto my arm and I was pulling and she would not let go of me because I wouldn't buy a silk scarf. We're now visiting the Reunification Palace. This used to be the presidential palace for South Vietnam and it is stuck in a time warp. It has been left to look exactly the way it did when the North stormed through on April 1975. This is the Notre Dame Cathedral in Saigon and it's a very easy landmark to notice because it's made out of red brick. And if you happen to be here at the right time, you can even join Mass. last stop of the day we are visiting the general post office in Saigon and normally a post office wouldn't be a main attraction but this one was designed by Gustave Eiffel the same guy who built the Eiffel Tower the old phone booths have been turned into ATM machine stations Although it is a main 
tourist attraction that still does function as a post office. And that concludes our grand tour of Saigon. We hope you enjoyed it. So, looking happy on the train. A heart. Are you dreaming about cats or hamsters? Cats? Not if it's cats. Yes, I'm dreaming about cats. So the first travel agent we went to in Chiang Mai told us there were no seats left on the train. But look at this, we are on a train, no one's up there. And we are going to Bangkok on the train that is very full. Not. So basically what happened is we went to this really shady travel agent the first time and what they wanted to do was sell us a bus ticket, a really, really overpriced bus ticket. Normally a bus ticket is only 400 baht from Chiang Mai to Bangkok, but they were trying to sell it to us for 750 baht. So they said, no trains, only five seats left on the bus. Yeah, right. This will be my first time going to Bangkok. Last time I was there, it was just in transit, so I hadn't seen any of the city. And that's it for now, I think. The end. biking out to Tra Kwe. It's a little village. We're going for a special organic meal at a restaurant that grows its own vegetables and herbs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The sound on the water wheel. Water wheel. You're a natural. I don't know what it is. 
You should move out here and take up farming. So this place is amazing. It's like a little organic oasis where they just grow different herbs and vegetables. Everyone is farming. It's so peaceful and quiet. And it's beautiful. Like, look at all the flowers around us. So we have a very special drink here. It's called the water wheel drink. Lemon basil seed and ginger. Mmm, let's take a sip of that. Mm. Tastes very healthy. <laughs> <laughs> In a good way or a bad way? In a pretty good way. Okay. <laughs> Quay is a small farming community village located two kilometers northeast of the ancient Hoi An town area. So we've just come here for dinner, but if you decide to visit this village, you can also work with the farmers for the day. You can take a rice paper making class, or you can take a cooking class. So if you've been following along with our recent food videos, you've probably noticed we've been having these pancakes a lot and they are delicious. I have to say that the presentation of these ones down here, these look the best. Mm -mm -mm. So these here are the best country pancakes we've had. What I really like about them is they're not as oily or greasy as the other ones. They have a little bit of a fluffier texture. So this lovely presented dish is called Three Friends and there are three friends right in my hand. We have shrimp, pork, and vegetables wrapped around. Mmm, pop it in your mouth. Friendly. <laughs> Some good pals in my mouth. <laughs> These tres amigos are almost too pretty to eat. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Here we have our colorful papaya salad, and I didn't realize it was going to be this big. I'm starting to think we ordered way too much food. Are you kidding me? With me here? Too yeah. much food? Uh -huh. I'll take care of that. Well, to sum up this meal, I can honestly say this is the best dinner I've had since I've been in Vietnam. Absolutely love the dishes. You could just taste the freshness in every single dish we had. The prices were really affordable, the portions were generous, it was cooked really healthy, nothing was greasy or too oily, just absolute delight to come here and eat. I definitely agree, I think the long bike ride out here it was definitely worth it, and it's nice eating in such a quiet, peaceful setting, just being surrounded by the farms, so highly recommend it if you're in Hoi An. Today we're visiting Vientiane, the capital of Laos, and unlike other cities in Southeast Asia, which are the capitals of other big nations like Bangkok and Thailand, Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, or Hanoi or Saigon in Vietnam, this is a very small, quaint capital city. So the city gets a little bit of a bum rap, which I don't think is entirely justified. There aren't a lot of attractions here per se, but it's the kind of place where you can come and just chill out and relax. There's really good food, it's cheap, 
and it's a good hub to get to different places in the country like you can get to Luang Prabang in the north or you can head south to Savannah Ket or 4000 Islands. This afternoon we wanted to visit Wat Si Saket, but unfortunately we left it a bit too late. The temple has already closed so we can't actually go inside, but we're going to give you a little tour of the surroundings. We get here before 4pm people. Yeah. So this is the place I was most excited to visit. We made it to the Triumphal Arch and we are going to be climbing all the way up. Oh, it's yeah. only a couple stories high. Why the sad face? <laughs> we seem to be on a roll here because we just got here and apparently it's closed. It closed at 4 o'clock. Just like the temple closed at 4 o'clock. And we missed it because we wanted to eat Indian food. We put Indian food before sightseeing. Well, actually you did, but... Oh, be quiet! So we had three major things planned. So far, two of those have become absolute failures. Let's see if we can make it to the Mekong River before we miss sunset. Normally when we travel to a destination we like to spend 6-7 days, basically close to a week because we do have online work and jobs but Vientiane was unfortunately just a stopover so we only really had one day to go out and explore. So this is a bit of an unusual capital in the sense that it's very small and it doesn't necessarily offer a lot of attractions for visitors. However, I really enjoyed being able to spend a few days here and just relax and enjoy the surroundings because it has a very peaceful feel. lunch at the Bayon Well in Hoi An and this is a very small local restaurant. They have a fixed menu. Actually there is no menu. They just bring you food and you pay a fixed price and you eat as much as you want. And their focus is country pancakes and spring rolls. Which we both love. Yep. Put the salad in. Cucumber. Cucumber? Yeah. Right? Egg and cheese. And spring roll. And oh, a spring wow. roll. Oh, it's yeah. going to be a crunchy. And here we Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, by banana leaf. Uh huh. Now that is a special roll. That's got a meat. Okay. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, we make like this. Excellent. So I dip here? Yeah, it is yeah. here. Oh, oh, that's okay. Yeah. Give it a try, Audrey. Should we? Okay. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. How was that? Mm hmm. <laughs> wow. Hard to bite, huh? <laughs> so you're going to what? Well, Sam here wasn't paying attention to the whole assembly process, so I will have to demonstrate how to roll a spring roll. Okay, so we add a little bit of greens, some lettuce. Oops. A little Let's fumbling with the chopsticks there. Hey, here. hey, hey, don't be hating. Some greens, well, maybe some of this. This looks good. Yeah. Okay. 
then. She said this is our kimchi, which looks a bit different from the kimchi we ate in it's Korea. It's like Vietnamese style kimchi. Yeah. So let's add some. It must some be of that. pickled vegetables. Yeah. Then she added a spring roll. And oh, don't forget the meat. The meat. Let's try this one. Let's try a smaller one. Yeah. I don't know if it's chicken or beef, but. Looks good. Smells good. Now that is a super loaded roll. Okay. Now tightly. Uh, voila. This is kind <laughs> of it. And now you good add enough. just a little bit of chili to the sauce. It's kind of a peanut based sauce, I think. Yeah. And we dip and enjoy. Oh, oh there comes more food. Voila. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Here's the country pancakes. Thank you. Yum. food monster so this delectable roll this time instead of the spring roll it has the country pancake inside of it mm. so we're gonna give a try to that one oh how does it taste is that better these rolls are amazing you got pancakes the spring roll the, the greens the skewered sake all in this <laughs> Happy boy. And if that feast was enough, we've got a little sweet treat to end off with. Ooh, what flavor did you get? I got cherry. Mm. Mm. And the dessert just keeps on coming. Now we have pineapple. Fresh pineapple. Oh, wow. Do you have any room for that? No. Well, I'll eat it. Okay, seriously, that was the feast of feasts. Normally country pancakes or spring rolls or satay taste great on their own, but all wrapped up together in one big roll dipped into a peanut sauce? Wow! Our lunch came to 180,000 dong, which is about $9. I think that's a great price because they just kept bringing out plates and plates of food and we were stuffed and then they were offering us dessert and it was like, oh. I don't want to turn it down. I guess I'll eat it anyway. So yeah, great selection there. The service there is really friendly, almost in a very unique kind of way. There was one time where the lady was coming over and she looked like it appeared she was going to be wrapping up a roll for us, but instead she just grabbed a satay and plopped it right in Audrey's mouth. And at the very end of the meal, she came over and noticed I was looking hot. She undid a napkin for me. I thought she was going to put it in my hands. Oh no, she just came and rubbed my whole face right down. <laughs> but yeah.